this contest set forward for. It is for the WWE Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while. You could miss it. Welcome to another edition of Around the Turnbuckle. I'm the Big Alboski. That guy right there is Professor Keith, as always. And joining us, man, is the one and the only Mongoose. What's up, man? Hey, man. How's it going, fellas? Absolutely Good. excellent, my friend. But before, we talk, but before we talk to Mongoose, uh, Professor Keith, the news came out that Scott Hall is on life support, and I know you wanted to say a few words about Scott yeah, Hall. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, the whole wrestling world kind of devastated right now to read that news. Um, Scott Hall broke his hip last month. Um, a blood clot broke loose, and he had three heart attacks last night. He's on life support. He's in critical condition, so we want to acknowledge that. We want to send our thoughts, send our prayers, send our good vibes out to Scott Hall. Uh, when I first started watching wrestling, you know, Razor Ramon, the Intercontinental title, I watched the, that legendary ladder match with Shawn Michaels live with a buddy of mine sure. as it happened. Um, when I think about pro wrestling, when I think about, you know, great Intercontinental champion, Scott Hall's name always pops to mind. So he's been through a lot, and I'm hoping he kicks out of this one, too. Great words, Keith. Excellent words. Our prayers and thoughts, as as Keith said, to Scott Hall and his family and every and his friends and everybody that's around him. I uh, hope, like Keith said, I hope he pulls out of this. So please, if you're watching this, say a prayer for Scott Hall. In the meantime, we got Mongoose here, Keith. And Mongoose, if if you've never heard of Mongoose, where you've been living for the past 20 years, he is a, a wrestling legend in the independent scene, especially in Pennsylvania. A uh, good friend of mine for a very long time. But Mongoose, we're going to start, man, brother. We're going to start with our question. We, we're going to start with our question that we always ask, which is, how did you fall in love with professional wrestling in the first place? I don't think I ever asked you that question face to face. No, I don't think so. A lot of people don't ask that question. But, you know, I was a kid, probably five, six years old. My dad would watch wrestling all the time. And that's when you would see Bruno San Martino on television. And from then on, it was glued to the sofa Saturday afternoons, you know. And uh, they would be on, let's see, uh, 12 or 1 o'clock in the afternoon, 5 o'clock in the afternoon, and then like midnight. And all that stuff was taped locally. Hamburg Fieldhouse, uh, Ag Hall, Ag you know, Hall. all around here, the stuff was going on. Hillsburg Catholic High School used to have wrestling in it. Um, you, you couldn't go anywhere around here without talking or seeing wrestling it was it was an unbelievable time to be a kid right because uh i would my stepfather knew i was into wrestling from an early age when i was five and he would take me to phillsburg catholic high school gym whenever they came in he would take me to the ag hall he would take me to hamburg field house so yeah man i was probably right there with you and i and i didn't even know you at the time you know right so man all right so you grew up and uh, you decided at some point, how old, how old were you when you decided that you wanted to do this? And how did you seek out? Uh, uh, I'll tell you, I always, wanted to, always wanted to do it. And um, there was a time in my life, you're, you're friends with them as well, uh, the Opitz twins. We had went to, I was in my 20s, and we had went to the Samoan Training Center in Allentown, which was by the Dunkin' Donuts and the uh, Bowling Alley just under the bowling alley uh, off of 7th Street. And I was in there, and we were goofing around, and Alpha had said, do you want to train? And I said, yeah, but I can't afford it. And he said to me, can you afford $25 a week? So I went back and said something to my wife at the time, 
and it wasn't going to happen. <laughs> so, you know, time went on and I was divorced and uh, kind of laid off at the time. And I found these guys called Bad Crew. They opened up a training center in Allentown. And uh, next thing you know, you know, I'm in the ring. Uh, we had a ring set up, no canvas, no padding, just screwed the plywood <laughs> together. Uh, a local indie guy who also wrestled for WXW, Night Train, came in. He was like a carpenter. He screwed everything together so it wouldn't come apart. And I was bumping <laughs> on the plywood. Another guy with me, Love Bug, uh, Robert Butts, he was doing the same thing. Um, but you know, it was, it was going to happen regardless. So, so about about paying how- your dues bumps oh, on yeah. plywood. Ouch. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, and so talk about, yeah, like Keith said, paying your dues, but also, uh, so talk about how long did you train? Who were your trainers and when, how long did you train before you had your first match? All right. So I find these guys. And it's a year, actually, before they open the training center. And they have shows at the Castle Hill Ballroom. And their federation was the Eastern Wrestling Federation. So I just kind of jumped in. And this guy, Bob Starr, who used to be like a beat-up bag on WWE and WCW. Right. Uh, they called him Bonaducci because he had the red hair and stuff. Okay. <laughs> so... I started carrying the poles and stuff and I was carrying the poles in two at a time. And, uh, you know, he'd give me a t-shirt for helping out. So, uh, Jake and Paul who are bad crew, um, you know, they opened up their training center and like, I was right there, uh, helped put it together. Uh, we had, we had no heat. There was no windows. It was a warehouse with a light bulb, like, uh, like you hear the stories of where Ric Flair and Bob Backlund trained. It was right. kind of like that. Mm-hmm. And believe me, I was having every minute of it because it was, uh, it was like a dream and a scene out of a Rocky movie, you know? Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you loved it. I knew you loved it, man. You used oh, to come into, se- you used to come into seven 11 when you, when you first kind of got like started actually being booked around the area and stuff like that. I mean, you, yeah. You had WWF on your mind too. I mean, was that like the was that the ultimate goal? Oh yeah, I sure did have it on my mind. And uh, I'm going to tell you, I started training in. I want to say ninety eight, but it was like four months into training. They're like, "You're ready for a match." So, you know, they put me under a hood, and I was Hu Flung Poo from Brown Spots, Beijing. <laughs> to, uh, Kung Fu fighting, nice. And uh, it was a hit. A guy, Danny Rose, um, came out. Might have been a squash match for all I know. I don't even know if I got anything in, but I got to like pretend I was a ninja. So he was singing um, the Gambler the whole time he was wrestling. Not like, really. He started singing it. We'd do some stuff, and he'd pick up the microphone and go on again with the lyrics and then, you know, and then it was over, but uh, unbelievable. So, and here's a guy that you took on. Here's a guy that you took on a while back, right? Steve Chaz. Oh, he's, the, he's my favorite uh, referee. There, he is. Oh, there you go. <laughs> and he's like, Hey, mongoose baby. Yeah, brother. He, uh, we gave him some shit one time in the ring and he hit us with a stunner and lost his sneaker. <laughs> Ah, he's a great guy. Love it, love it. Yeah, beautiful. Tell it. I got. I got James Lloyd Bumgarner. Tell it. Tell the mongoose that the Almighty Haystack says hi. Yeah. There you go. They're all coming out now. Yeah. See, they're coming out. They're coming out of the woodwork. I knew they would. Like wrestling. I knew they would. I knew they would, man. I knew when you came on. You, like you were, you were telling me you're like, I don't know if I'd be such a good show, Big Al, blah blah blah. And I'm like, dude, I'm telling you, the people that we've met, I've heard your name so many times. I'm like, I know that guy. I've known him for over twenty fucking years. Yeah, and, you know. So believe me, I there's there's people watching that couldn't wait for you to come on. So I'll tell you um, the truth. Um, we had guys coming up to train when we first opened. The guys that trained with uh, Alpha. And the Wild Samoan Training Center, they were coming to the training center. And uh, yeah. 
off the thought that that might not be good for business. So I, um, I had asked if I could go down there, you know, because there's kind of a like an unwritten law that you shouldn't, you know, cross certain lines. Right. So nobody had a problem with me going to the Samoan training center. So I would train two nights a week for BC bumps. And then I would go down and work out with them two nights a week. And, you know, that's a thousand squats a night. That's push ups and sit ups and running the ropes and taking bumps and getting chopped by Samu. And, uh, you know, beat up by the rest of the clan. Uh, so what a great learning experience. Oh, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. And I took that and, and helped other kids along the way. So but, um, I, got a, I got a question here. Layla says, tell us about the time you went through flaming tables and how hot it was laying there waiting for bad crew to jump off the ladder. Oh, man. Let me tell you. I know who that is. And she knows the story. <laughs> but they were, they were using lighter fluid, and, uh, oh. like charcoal lighter fluid, rather than like Bic lighter fluid that goes right. out. Well, they uh -huh. just kept dousing it and dousing it. And I'm up there, and I'm like, please come down already. Please come down already off the ladder. And uh, we went through the table, and the fire just like whooshed right up around us. Oh. And, uh, <clears throat> he pulled me over. He pinned me. And then I laid there, and they hit the fire extinguisher right in my face. Oh, I, I coughed and hacked so much. I think I had COVID then. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> mongoose was patient zero. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mongoose was patient zero. All right. So, all right. So, tell us about that first match. Who did you wrestle? Did you did you think you were ready? Uh, yeah, I felt I was ready. Um, I'm trying to remember if it was the cat burglar. Or another, can't remember the guy's name, uh, but he would come out with a bow on, and uh, I can't think of the the song he came out to, but he, he really got the crowd going. And I had painted my face. Uh, no, wait, that might not have been the first match. Uh, that wasn't the first match. <laughs> I'll tell you that story in a minute. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, Keith. We just got to let him go. Oh, yeah. The first match, I think, was the Cat Burglar. And, okay. uh, you know, uh, he probably beat me. Um, you know, I was just starting out. The crowd at Castle Hill was pretty hot. You know, I came out to Wu-Tang Clan music, uh, try to get him up. Um, you know, the Mongoose thing really was, I, I think, was a rib on the guys training me because I had said something one time about, you know, mongoose is a rattlesnake's worst enemy. And that oh. was, you know, Stone Cold was hot. Right. So kind of used that. Yeah. And then I just kind of turned it into like, you know, uh, I don't want to say uh, what they call that. X game stuff, but. Right. You no. Know. Mm -hmm. But anyway. You know, that was a was a good match. Cat Burglar was from Maryland or something like that. He was somebody else when he wasn't the Cat Burglar, of course, but it was good. <laughs> mean Mark Mest, you know him? Oh, big guy. What's up? Mean yeah. Mark. Yeah. He says, hey, guys, Mongoose, my brother, how are you? All right, brother. Long time no see. Yeah, I, I, we yeah. love Mean he Mark. He's been a yeah, he runs the training center, too. He's, uh, mm -hmm. he's been around 100 years. He's... Uh, He's well known too. You ought to have him on the show. Oh, he's on we all have the time. many times. We yeah, can't, we can't keep him away. We love oh, Mark. Good. Believe yeah. me. Yeah, me too. Him and his brother. We love Mark, and we love Outbreak and the things that they're doing with Outbreak and the Dungeon University. And yeah. yeah, we've gotten we've gotten to know him really well, and we appreciate him to the max. He sends us guys all the time. Yeah, tell yeah, him we're still he's, wearing the Dungeon hey. T-shirt. What's that? We're still wearing the Dungeon T-shirt, Mark. <laughs> there you go. There it is. Yeah, we love Mark. We we say to Mark like, "Oh, yes, dropped out. Can you help us like five minutes to go?" And he's like, "Oh yeah, I'll come on." Yeah, and do he it. comes right in. Uh, ha ha! I feel a hundred. <laughs> I know you're not a hundred. No, we love you, Mark. Yeah. Uh, so mongoose, mongoose in the house is Thundercat Greg. Winners, nice to meet you. He's a wrestler down in uh, down in the south, down in Tennessee. Mm. Well, pleasure. Uh, he's, uh, Pleasure. 
Yeah, yeah, he's he's a guy that helps him. helps out with his promotion, teaches the young guys, loves doing that, comes on the show, offers tidbits and wisdom and advice. Love Greg. Yep, and 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 Thundercat, your around the turnbuckle t shirt is en route. Just just letting you know there, brother. He asked me for that. What location was your promotion? Uh he mostly PA, oh, right? Right, yes, Mongoose? I'm in Pennsylvania, Allentown. Uh, you yeah. know, it was uh EWF, then it turned to Hardway Wrestling. You know, and hard way, you know, that's the that's the sign for getting juice the hard way. <laughs> right. Uh-huh. So that's the right. way I worked it too. The hard way. To so the, to the steps, the chair. You started to get a following, uh, if I remember right, you started you started to win some titles, right? Somewhere. Yeah. I'll tell you about the match where I painted my face. Okay, go ahead. Um yeah. You know, I didn't ask if I could, but I painted my face. It was a Fourth of July weekend, and it was a it was a pretty big show. So I came out with red, white, and blue shorts on, and uh, painted my face. Um, it was a big deal to me, you know. And I was built well, kind of looked like Sting at the time. Right. And uh, afterwards, boy, did I get my ass chewed out by the promoters. Oh. Who said you could paint your face? Who said you could wear the those tights and? All this other stuff. I said, is this not independence? Right. And but that's how it was. That's the old school mentality. You know, now it's like be whoever you want to be, and that's the way it right. should be. You know. Greg says Japanese style, love it. Yep, love it. Uh Layla it. Layla says, I may know too much about the goose. I would love to hear more about the EWF and hard hardware uh she means hard one wrestling day. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah, there was a, you know, there was a lot going on back then. It was, uh, this place was a hotbed. There were indies all over the place. Different era, was, right? Different yeah. era. You know, that was the late 90s, too, when I started, and it was still still pretty hot for the indie scene. Like you, like I said, you go Bethlehem to Allentown, you know, to, you know, guys were still putting shows on at Hamburg, uh, right. you know, Scranton, all over the place. You could, anywhere you wanted to go, you could get wrestle. You saw uh, Dino Santa, Triple WA. They were running Sellersville. They were yep. running their shows other places. They were running three shows a month at one time. Right. And uh, back to your question about the titles. Yeah, I had a few titles. They EWF, I had the light heavyweight. I had the title, uh, tag titles. I had the heavyweight title. I never got to get the hardcore title. I want to be the one ever guy to have like the, you know, triple crown, if you will. Right. Mm-hmm. But I guess kind of I did because the hard the hardcore title didn't come along till hard way. But I had all the other ones, so it's good stuff. Amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, Greg says I think it's funny how promoters. Have a problem with the way people want to promote themselves. Um, yeah. But in in my in Mongoose's case, Greg, like he 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 wrestled most of his most of his career in the late nineties, early two thousands. It was a different it was a different time. Yeah. yeah I mean so, yeah, yeah, the WWF was hot and it was like a rising tide raising all boats, yeah. you know. I was, uh, I was wrestling for WXW and they were they were putting me over huge. Yeah. And then, so I mean, and, and for like the Samoans to take an outsider, you know, I didn't, I didn't pay them to train, but yet they, they took a liking to me and I love them. I would be at office house. We had a picnic there and, you know, they made chicken. And when we were in Nescapec, we wrestled and they cooked afterwards. And, uh, you know, um, I remember helping off a junior out in the ring and, you know, his dad watching and say, Hey, pay attention. The guy knows what he's doing. Right. And yeah, you know, that was good to me. And they were putting me over. And the next thing you know, somebody else got involved or gotten off his ear. You know, somebody that could do something for the promotion. And next thing you know, it's like, hey, it's time for you to give back. And that's when you give back. Right. And mm-hmm. that was the end of it. But I can't say anything bad. I'll tell you that right now. You wouldn't trade it for the world, right? No way. I would, I would, the only thing I would say is I should have probably tried harder. Uh, I remember, remember a, 
I tried hard, but I should have tried harder because I think at one point, if I had started earlier, I could have made it. Well, I, like we we talked about it a bunch of times. I remember. I don't remember the details, all right, but I remember conversation after conversation with you, one on one. If I'd work third shift, you're on your way home, either from training or from a show that you just did, and you'd tell me about it, and then you we talk about WWF, and that was the goal. But you started. There was there there came a point where you realized that that wasn't going to happen. Oh yeah. But you loved it so much, though, right? You still, you, you still were going to do it until you couldn't do it no more. Yeah, I wish I still could. I mean, yeah, people ask me, but you know, I just uh, not right now. Right. But life happened, and different things happened, and you know, I mean, at this point, could you like get your like? Could could you see yourself in the business as maybe a trainer or something like that? Well, I had my own training center for a while. Okay. You know, uh, and then uh, like Bud Carson, he had his training center and I would train guys there. And actually I became the trainer at BC bumps. Okay. I, I was the first student and I became the trainer and, you know, I've seen guys, there was a place called Ohio Valley and two of the guys went there and it didn't work out the first time. And they went back again. And sadly to say, it didn't work out again, but they would come back and they're like, Goose, you need to go there. That's where you belong because right. it's, the, it's the training and the wrestling that is you that, you know, um, but that didn't happen either. But like I said, I got to meet a lot of people. I get to see guys like Kid Co on AEW and, uh, you know, I helped train him and, you know, I saw Danny Danger was on Raw, got beat up by Ezekiel Jackson, but still. I remember that. Who cares? There he I was. met him. I, I met him uh, at once, Danny Danger, yeah. uh, before we had this show. Um, And, you know, talking shop with him and how he was always, his aspirations was WWE or bust. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and sometimes it happens and sometimes you get a tryout, but other times, you know, some guys don't even get that far. Yeah, I had to, I went to a show in Virginia one time, an ECW show at the, uh, there's a amphitheater down there. And mm. I took a tape of my trainers to give it to, uh, what's his name? Tommy Dreamer. Right. And I should have been taking a tape of myself. But being, right. a, lo being a loyal student. Right. You know, hey, this is what uh -huh. it is. Can, uh, can't look back. I mean, you can look back, but hey. Yeah, I mean, the, the, we're going to ask that question in a little bit, but uh, Layla says they put you in a body bag. Yeah, that was uh, WSW. They, uh, <laughs> I'll tell you, my my best friend's kids thought that I was, I was dead. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was the blood. It's funny that they call the guys now the bloodline because at right. that time, the bloodline was a group of guys in WXW and, you know, they were kind of lead around by this dark vampire type guy. And, you know, they were all dark and mysterious. Of right. course, it took more than one of them to put mongoose in the body bag, brother. Right. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> Let's be clear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. So, so, uh, great Thundercats back. He says, I, I have, I have a match next weekend against Adam priest from AEW dark. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome, uh -huh. man. Dude, awesome. Thundercat's been a wrestler he's, since he's 2003. Awesome. He, he he started in 2003, so we're talking 18 years or so yeah, he's been a wrestler, yeah. and we got to know him, and he keeps sending us guys that are green yeah. as gills, but, but they want to get some exposure, so they come on here. We have an established audience, and sometimes we get guys booked. Actually, we're trying to get Thundercat booked up here so we can see him live. Yeah. yeah. That'd be awesome. Absolutely, <clears throat> I want I want him on I want him in three uh, WA. You know, I wrestled a match in LVW against Shane Douglas. This is going back a while, and not for nothing, but Scott Hall and uh, Terry Funk were in the audience because wow. there was a big autograph wow. on the lawyer that day, and you know Scott Hall was there. It's funny that we. Talk about Scott Hall. This made right. me remember that just now because uh, Shane Douglas is coming to town that, this month. He yep. is. 
And um, and so you wrestled him one on one. Yeah, one on one. So tell us about that match. Oh, it's amazing! Like the guy is a, uh, you know, he's a, a book of knowledge. Right. Um, we made it so you know, local indie guys just shouldn't go out there and beat the big name. But the right. big names know when they come in that they're putting a the local guy. They're giving him the push. Right. You know, so. Yeah. You know, Shane Douglas, you know, he uh he won, but he didn't win. You know, he right. he kinda he kinda had the dog chain in his boot, hit right. me and then dropped it. The ref saw it, you know, reverse the decision, Mongoose got the victory over Shane Douglas. There it is. That was pretty yeah. big. I didn't beat Haxton Jim Duggan. He beat me with a three point stance, but I I made fun of him the whole night. <laughs> <laughs> You know, so so name some of the guys that you've come across that you've met that you've wrestled the maybe some names that that obviously people would recognize. Okay, you know Jerry Lawler, Al Snow. Okay, um, right. they were on the same show as me, and I forget where it was, maybe New York or something. Right. I go up to these guys, you introduce yourself, you know, in the locker room. So you know, they're just one of the guys, even though they've been to the show, they're still one of the guys. They respect everybody. Everybody res should respect them. And I was getting, I was through, through the years, I was collecting autographed pictures from my kids. So I went up and I asked them, you know, how much is it for the autographed pictures? And they're like, are you a worker? I said, yeah. I said, it's for my kids though. They're like, yeah, don't worry about it. And, you know, <laughs> scratched her, scratched her name right off and away they go. Uh, Superfly Snooker the same way. Right. Um, you know, Tommy Dreamer wrestled on the same show with that guy. I would have liked to have been with him, but I had a tag team at the time. We were uh, S and M, High Street and Mongoose. There you go. Uh, that was a fun time too. We actually looked alike, and uh, we wrestled in Combat Zone. Uh, we did some other stuff for Dino. You know, a couple other places we wrestled together. It was fun because we had blonde hair and a goatee. Oh, we also wrestled in uh, in Delaware for the. I can't think of the name of the Fed now. ECW. Right. Okay. ECWA. ECWA. Yep. Yeah, and that was kind of, and and even at that time, that was kind of like a training ground to go to Ohio Valley to go to WWE. Right. Mm -hmm. was, uh, trying to think of some of them old, like the one announcer that or interviewer from WWE used to be there all the time. I can't think of his name now. Too many chair shots. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, speaking of chair shots, Layla, come, Layla's back. She's like, you, you've had, you had to have a great time wrestling Sabu. Uh, oh, yeah. Tell us about taking that chair, taking that chair. How'd that feel? Oh yeah, Sabu. I wrestled him a couple times. There you First go. time I wrestled him was in the Poconos, and uh, he wanted to use tables. The promoter said, "No way, you cost too much money." And, <laughs> uh, Kevin Nash was on that show. Um, wow. Who else was on that show? A couple other guys. I can't think of the names right now, but yes, yeah. yeah, who? What a great time we had! Because first thing he says to me, he goes, "Can you wrestle?" I said, "Yeah." He goes, "Okay," and uh, you know he does the thing with the chair all the time, puts it up to you, drop kicks you, lands on on your face. Doesn't matter, right? But what a professional! You know, great guy. Always Absolutely. making sure you're okay. And then uh, came around a couple years later, he's injured. But he's still wrestling because you know those guys got to keep going. So right. the promoter calls me and says, "You want to work Sabu?" I said, "Sure, of course I do. Of course." He goes, "Okay, yeah. because we need somebody that can protect them." You know, and uh, we had another amazing match. Little Jeannie was around at the time. God bless her. I, yeah, she was awesome. And I remember her from the bodybuilding days when she was in all the magazines and stuff. What? Well, it's a terrible thing, but. It is. I was so sad to read about that. What was that earlier this year that yeah. she had passed? And and earlier she should have been on WWE when it was yeah. WWF and they had all the like uh, you know who'd they have then? Oh man, you know uh, Nicole Bass was there, right? Uh, yeah. Oh man, what's the black girl was jacked up? Jazz. Jackie. Uh, oh, Jackie, yeah. Jackie, yeah. yeah. She could have done well with Jackie. 
yeah, all that. That all would have fit in at the time. But, uh, yeah, anyway, they, you know, I got to wrestle Sabu. Boogeyman was on that show. Uh, <laughs> you know, anybody you ever see never really had an attitude. The only attitude I ever really come across are the guys that are on indies. Right. Sometimes they're, they're too big for their britches. But I guess it because a lot of promoters grab them because they're the talent. And, you know, they look the part. They're six-pack abs. They can talk on the mic. And they can wrestle. But other ones that can do all that as well are so humble that, you know, you just think you were sitting there talking to your best friend or, you know, part of your family. Thundercat uh -huh. says, I love the vets, man. Johnny Swinger, Axe and Mike Jackson, Rhino, Caprice Coleman, the Rock and Roll Express, QT yep. Marshall, just, just to name a few that I've been around lately. Yeah, that's awesome. See, he knows. And, and those guys, it's all about giving back. Because without guys like us that watched it growing up, there right. wouldn't be guys like them left to tell the stories. Absolutely. Uh -huh. uh, Bumgarner's back. Charlie Brown? Yeah, Charlie Brown. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I wrestled on a show for a guy. There were, believe me, there was like seven or eight people in the audience. And that's, that's wow. what you come across on the indies. You come across Sure. That. Sure. Yeah. So... At that time, I didn't like not wearing a shirt because I didn't look like I did 10 years earlier. Right. So, mm -hmm. But, you know, that's why Kevin Owens wears a shirt. So there's a CVS close by to where we're wrestling. So I run over there to see what kind of shirts they have because I had forgotten my shirt. And uh, I didn't even know it was a Tri Brown shirt. I just saw a yellow shirt with a line on it. <laughs> right. So I grabbed this shirt. And I go back and I come out and all eight people sounded like there was 50 people yelling Charlie wow. Brown. Love yelling it. Charlie Brown. Right? Stamping Charlie Brown. I'm like, son of a bitch. I guess I'm on to something here. <laughs> so, you know, I started wearing it and, uh, you know, Goosemania took a back seat, whatever you want to call it. Right. And, uh, people would be like Charlie Brown. I tell them, look, if you guys keep chanting Charlie Brown, I'm leaving. I start walking away and they chant it louder. Unbelievable. Yeah, uh, there was a there was a segment with a guy Roadblock who I trained, uh, Chad, and uh, yeah, boy, yeah. We, did, we did the whole football spot in the ring. You know, he holds a football and pulls it away, and I take the big <laughs> thing. crowd went ballistic. Love it. I love that. Only in pro wrestling, yeah. just I'm, something I'm, you had to do. You run across the street at a CVS, and you've come up with a whole new gimmick. <laughs> <laughs> Mama Brickhouse in the in the house. Hi, Mama Brickhouse. I agree, but they are just for themselves. Talking about indie wrestlers, I believe. Yeah. I mean, um, it's tough because if you don't advocate for yourself, who's going to advocate for you? I get it. Like you want to, you want to try to get yourself to that next level. But yeah, I agree with you, Mongoose. You've got to also be there for other people too. You can't just be all about yourself. Right. Layla says, what would you say your five favorite matches of your career were? Well, I'd have to say one was wrestling my son. Really? Um, yeah. That was in LVW. Um, now, this wasn't a match, but there was a New Year's Eve where we uh, kept the training center to ourselves, and it was just me and my two sons. It was kind of like our New Year's Eve thing. So that would be on the top, you know, that's at the top. Um, let me see. Uh, man, I can't. Uh, so hard because I, I, there was a lot of matches. There was sometimes I was wrestling three times a weekend. Right. We were doing, I was doing a double shot, you know, wrestling on Friday, doing a double shot on a Saturday. And for like a rookie back then, that was unheard of. Insane. But, you know, I'm getting around Reading. All over the place. Um, Doomsday, Danny Rose. That was a great match, I think. Uh, George Anthony, which was also EWF. And Doomsday, he he was like the EWF champ. He wrestled. I never really got to wrestle him in the, in the EWF, which would have been amazing. Um, you know, wrestled Bad Crew a bunch of times. Uh, 
I don't know, it was just so many. I, I really loved every match um, other than one time there was this guy they called Jamaican Nailer, and I wrestled him and another guy in a three-way, and uh, they almost killed me, so I spit on him and walked out. <laughs> <laughs> so that was probably the worst. Temper, temper, brother. Yeah. And then nice. uh, I think uh, we were wrestling the backseat boys, uh, me and George Anthony, and he went to swing the chair, or he turned on me and hit me with the chair. And busted me open. I got 14 stitches in my head. Jeez. Oh. Wrestling the backseat boys, that was fun all the time. Um uh, man, there's there's a whole bunch. It, when you when you called it a career, Goose, how many years did you do it? Well, I was doing it pretty hard for from like ninety nine when I started all the way to 2013 and then kind of died off a little bit and then i would do it here and there and then uh you know dino always had a spot for me when i wanted to wrestle <laughs> sure you know he was like yeah. yeah and so you know that was kind of that was kind of home to me too as well he loves us i i gotta say yeah. i wow. you know Wait. i'm glad that i'm glad that i'm, gl I'm glad we got you know to be to get to know him that he's he puts on a really good show yeah, and he's very he's very loyal. Very loyal to his talent and his talent is loyal to him. Yep. Um Thundercat with a challenge. You lay Thundercat, you come on here and you lay down a challenge all the time, brother. Face oh. me, brother, and you'll you'll have another top five match. <laughs> Maybe I will. Wow. Yeah, you you might. Greg's great. He's got a hell of a drop kick. Thundercat reminds me of if you take basically Dan, basically Brian Danielson, and would add a little bit of high fly. Like he can, he can, he can do springboard stuff too. He can oh, do nice. But I yeah, like, I, mean, he, I like that combination myself. He's old school too, though. So he's been doing it for 17, 18 years. So he he knows how to tell a story in the ring. I've watched a bunch of his actually. I've watched more matches of his than any other independent guy I've ever met because the guy sends me all his matches. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as he does a match, he sends me, he sends me the YouTube video. He says, here, check this out. And yeah. And I love it, Greg, believe me, keep him coming. But I'll yeah. tell you though, uh, everybody used to always come to me and say, Hey mongoose, uh, these people are saying wrestling's fake. And because they knew how I felt about that, because right. fake is a cartoon, mm -hmm. you know, to me, it's still real to me, damn it. But uh, <laughs> in training, we were training and the dude was trying to get out of the head scissors and hit me with an elbow in my mouth, busted my teeth in half and oh. went through my lip. And uh, I pulled my lip off. I picked the teeth up, put them in a bag and went right back to training. I didn't go to the dentist till the next day. Do you want us? Do you want to take a stunner from me again, one last time? <laughs> oh, and that's the bottom line, brother. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, how much? So, I mean, do you know about retirement. So, so do you do you do you still pay attention to to mainstream now? Do you like? What do you think? Do, do you watch? Do you still watch WWE or or have you checked out AEW or whatever? Yeah, I watch it all as much as I can. Um, and you know, you say your prayers go out to Scott Hall, man. Prayers yeah. got to go with the Big E too. Yeah, absolutely. Man. I saw that footage, man. That's, that's just. That's yeah, I just, just saw that on. I just saw that on Rudy Gonzalez's page this morning. Yeah, that's like, and I agree with Rudy Gonzalez his assessment on that, which is this is why, this is why you don't bring up guys who have been in NXT for three for a cup of coffee and put them on SmackDown with Big E this close to WrestleMania. That's ridiculous. Well, I also think, too, you have to get mad at the agent because if what I hear is correct, that they plot out every spot, and you have to get mad at the guy that says, oh, let's do an overhead belly-to-belly -belly suplex on the floor because yeah. nothing bad will happen from that. I mean, even if you've got guys that are super-duper trained, yeah. Owen Hart hurt Steve Austin. Owen Hart never hurt anybody. Well, bad yeah, things yeah. happen, well, you right know. Now. I was in the building when that happened. Wrestle, so uh, was Summer I. SummerSlam 97. Same night Big E gets hurt, uh, Drew McIntyre does that same move to those guys five times. 
the yeah. arm, belly to belly, and it goes and it works. And then uh, exactly, I think Sasha Banks did it too, or somebody did it in that match. But if you know what you're doing, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, that Those guy, guys, that guy's in the ring with legends. Like he's in there with Sheamus. He's in there with Big E and Kofi. Like he's out mm -hmm. there now with guys who have solidified their spot in the Hall of Fame. Love you too, Greg. Thanks for yep. chiming in, brother. And, uh, you know, so I'm sure he had some butterflies, even though he's been out there before. But now you're now you're out there and you're doing your thing. Like, he's not out there as the third wheel or, you know, the, the guy that somebody's going to interfere so you win the match or whatever. He doesn't have to really put out all the effort. Now he's whoa, like, whoa, 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 hold the phone. Is this true? I just got a comment from Layla. I want to know if this is true. I'm going to put it up here for you. I remember the fans that the Goose and Greg Anthony beat up who thought it was fake. Oh, is that is that the, true? You got the name wrong, but it was it was um, or George Anthony. Yeah, it wasn't George Anthony, but she's got the story right. And that's. That's my daughter-in-law. Love you too, babe. And um, <laughs> uh, we were we were wrestling in Sellersville for Triple W A. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll, tell, I'll tell you this whole story. Go so ahead. we're in the ring, um, and I would think it was me and uh, who's the guy's partners with Dino? You know who that is? The big guy, Paul. Paul. He's wrestling. Mm. So we're in there wrestling, and uh, the guys outside the ring are yakking. So I did the macho man thing and sat on the rope and waved them in. Well, those dumbasses came in the ring. Oh, no. Oh, my God. And and, and that's a while back. So you're still kind of old school. And right. you, know, you don't have security or anything like that. No. So, no. So we started beating the shit out of them. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fuck them. They were stupid enough to come in. So at the time, BC Bumps Training Center with Bad Crew was still going on. Two of those guys came and signed up and trained after that, and they became <laughs> they, and they became two great wrestlers in Chikara, uh, Icar Icarus and I forget the other one's name, but they became big names in Chikara after that. That's unbelievable. So you know, and then there were some backyard kids who tried to smooch their way on the show. And Lovebug and myself went out there. Well, we kind of badgered Dino into letting us interrupt. And right. uh, we ran out there and took their kendo sticks and smashed them. I put a I put an egg on the guy's forehead like this, you know. And uh, I kind of felt like they were disrespecting by just coming in there and telling Dino that, hey, we'll work for free and you can put us on the show. And we'll bring a lot of tickets. Well, you know, that's fine. But guys have been here paying their dues taking guitar shots to the back of their head, you know, they deserve a spot. Uh, so you are earlier, you named, you named some names, right? You named Jerry Lawler, you named Al Snow, you named yeah, Sabu. I, I wrestled Ivan or Nikolai Volkov one-on-one. -on -one at, at There's a name. That was a big show for triple W a. Yeah. Nikolai, yeah. Volkov, you know, and uh, that guy at his age at that time, he could still go. Oh, absolutely. Uh -huh. Absolutely. I mean, I, he wrestled till he was what at sixty, right? Like, something yeah, like that. They might have been older than that, than that when I wrestled him. Unbelievable. And you mentioned Shane Douglas. And he got coming back. He's in his fifties. I slipped and he pinned me, so <laughs> he got lucky. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we get to see him March the twenty sixth down in Quaker Town. That's going to be awesome. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, and and uh, Keith and I, like I like I told you before. We're we're doing the weekly show, so we actually get to call that match, which is a, an honor. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, do you? Whoa, here. Do you? Uh, do you think you could still lift the Hungarian barbarian over your head one last time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a steel cage match. Um, that was uh, that was in uh, Hardway Wrestling, and we were at the. I think we were. Where were we? The Garfield, which is now called the Gin Mill in Northampton. Right. And, uh, yeah, um, I was able to press him over my head. And uh, really? that was a big thing back then for me. 
And uh, I'm I, sure. I don't think I could do it anymore, but it was fun. So the the Goose Mania thing was a play off of Hogan, right? And so my question well, is, I'm a big fan. You know, I'm a big fan well, of Hogan. Well, so. I, I know you. I I knew yeah. that back then. I, I know it I now. But I did uh, my wasn't imitating him. I was emulating no. him. You know, right. And what my question to you to you is: Did you ever meet him? No, but I you saw never him. Met, you, you never met him. No, I saw him live at uh, Ag Hall when a bunch of the guys came, and I took my son there. And my son was next in line to ask questions. And I mean, we were like right at the stage. Was so. that the Hogan and Friends thing? Yeah, with 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 Duggan and I was there. Yeah. They were all there, yeah. Were you there? No, I, I was there. I was right? in the bill. I was I was yeah. there for that. Yeah, and uh, my son was like next in line. The guy asks a question that's in front of him, and yeah. as soon as the kid's done asking questions, they say, oh, we got to wrap it up. Right. And, uh, it was cool, but then my son met him at Comic-Con. Okay. Um, so that was kind of cool. I, I, I don't know. if I, I'd probably have a heart attack if I ever met him in person. <laughs> but, does, your son, does your son still wrestle? No, no, he don't. But he should. Wow, he should. And um, uh, he's he, he's so good, but he just I don't know what happened. Something, something triggered him not to wrestle anymore. I think I it's mean, because he likes it. He likes the old school wrestling, right. and times uh-huh. have changed. That it's you know if, if you're not Ricochet. Or right. you know, or like Sami Zayn, uh, right? But <laughs> um, you know that kind of stuff. They all like that Shinsuke. You know, you still got your guys like Lashley and stuff like that. But you know, that's a whole nother category. Yeah, it's a different era now. I mean, you know the the attention span of the younger fans is not like they're not going to sit there and watch a guy do. Uh, a chin lock or a side headlock for for very long, right? Like yeah. you know, they're they get yeah. they get antsy. They want to see they want to see people flying around the ring, and they don't get it that you know you know working on a body part, telling a story in the ring, working on a leg or, or an arm or whatever is what guys used to do to to make matches last longer than five minutes of flipping all over the ring and doing well, these crazy I, stunts. I, I, you know what I mean? Wrestling. Right. You know, people wanted mm-hmm. to see wrestling. They wanted to see the 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 good guy versus the bad guy. They wanted right. that uh, that thing. I mean, back in the day, there weren't many people that were uh, fans of the heels. Well, that's me. Yeah, I'm but, a fan of the heels. I always have been right. in movies, in wrestling, whatever. I always right. root for the bad guy. Yeah, win if you can, lose if you must, but always cheat. Absolutely. Yep. <laughs> um, you know, I, I was I was always a huge mark for the Macho Man Randy Savage, especially when he was heel. You know, and then you know it started with Piper. I was in the building. I tell this story all the time to everybody. I told Keith a bunch of times. I was in the building when they were taping the uh, the Piper's <laughs> Pit where he where he, where he hit the coco- snooker with the coconut. I was in the building. I, w- I was eight years old. Yeah, it was Ag Hall. And yeah, I was my stepfather took me all the time whenever they would tape superstars of wrestling. They would tape a whole bunch of episodes in a row, and then at the end, they give you like the, they would give you a main event. And yep. the main event that day was Hogan and Andre against Bundy and Stud. Oh, nice. Yeah, I remember being there when Andre was there one time, and he would actually lean on the top bleacher. That's how tall he was. People wow. don't really do exactly. it. Like, he would lean on the top of like. He'd be sitting on the bleachers. He was leaning on the back of the bleacher on the top seat. You remember watching, watching the matches. You imagine how big I, how big Andre looked to me watching because oh. I would run down. All the kids would run down to the to the to the guardrail. Yeah. So I would run to the guardrail so I could reach out and try to high five Hogan on his way down. But Andre came out first, so I ran down there to get you know. I ran down there bef- before Hogan came out, so that I was standing right there. Now, Andre was high fiving people, but he was his arms were so big. I'm down as a kid. I, I didn't get to high five Andre. So just imagine an eight year old kid watching Andre the Giant walk by. You know what I mean? Hey. Insane. Hey, um, man. Le- on- Hogan slammed Andre when he was the heel long time before he came back as an incredible Hulk Hogan. 
Absolutely. Uh, please yeah, well, tell that... us your experience of meeting superstar Billy Graham. You met superstar Billy Graham. Yes. more And uh, <laughs> he was here for autograph signing at Bud's. So I took the kids to go see him because okay. we had always watched tapes and stuff of superstar. And, you know, uh, we had him sign the DVD. So um, we go out to eat with him after the show, right? And he needs a ride to the airport in Philly. And my kids lived in Virginia Beach, and I had to take them home because I had driven down on Friday to Virginia Beach from Easton, Pennsylvania. <laughs> I drove to Virginia Beach, got the kids, turned around, drove back. We went to the show. I don't even think I slept. Went to the show. After wow. the show, we ate dinner. I think we went to the Hamilton Family Diner in Allentown. Then okay. they say, is anybody going towards Philly? I said, I am. We go and we get his stuff. We get all his gear, whatever he has, his bag. We go back to my house. We get my dog. We get everything we need. And we start driving to Philly. So he's driving in the passenger seat. Kids are in the back. Dog's in the back. You know, he's telling stories. Um you know, then everybody be, was quiet for a little while so he could take a nap. And uh, we get to the airport. I help carry his stuff in. He gives me 100 bucks. I said, I don't want the money, man. This is great. Yeah. <laughs> Here's $100. I said, I was on my way this way anyway. So he gives me the $100. I must have held on to that for a little bit. You know what I mean? Right. I held on to those 520s for a while. And uh, so, yeah, it was pretty cool. Then. I start talking to him on the telephone and he starts talking about maybe starting a training center with, with me. Wow. And uh, then after a while, it just kind of died off. Right. And, uh, but that was neat as hell, man. Dude, that's amazing. Like you, you yeah. rode in the car for a couple hours with superstar Billy Graham. Yeah. Yep. And ate dinner with him, sat next to him, ate dinner with him, talked to him. Um, uh, there's a picture of me arm wrestling him, you know, of course he's older and, you know, but, uh, yeah, but right. still. there we were locking, locking up, you know, <laughs> I was gonna arm wrestle superstar Billy Graham. And, yeah. uh, so yeah, it was, a it was a neat experience. That was another one too. Um, another one is uh, real quick. Cause I see it's getting up there in time. Yeah, well, I know. Don't worry about it. Keep going. Uh, Batista's coming to town, right? And uh, there's a thing called Sports Fest around here, and they have wrestling all the time. Okay. So I'm on the same show. Well, we were in Battle Royal, and Batista comes in, and, you know, he melees everybody. So it's uh -huh. me. The last people in the ring are me, Gilberg, and Batista, who is Leviathan or some shit at the time. Right. 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 The OBW gimmick. Yeah. And this is because he trained at the Wild Samoans, and that's who puts the show on at the – thing there so he's coming to town again i get in the car friday i drive to virginia beach i come back mm -hmm. we get to linden street and the line is around the corner like it's down linden street and down 13th and waiting to get in so i get the kids i said ah, let's go up and see if they'll let us in so i get up we get to the front door and off his wife is there lets us come right in nice We're like yeah go over and talk to him so we go over and talk to him and, uh, you know, I introduced myself. He goes, I know who you are. I said, I said, oh. And this is when he's Batista in the WWE, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Like, my kids hear that. They're like, how does he know you? Isn't and I'm that like, cool? God's me. He goes, uh -huh. I, seen you on the, I seen you on the uh, on YouTube or on the page. I saw, you know, you're, you're part of my page or something. I said, oh, shit. Awesome. So we got our picture taken with him and then, you know, went on our merry way or whatever. But, you know, that was kind of cool. Uh, Chaz is back. He's like, uh, any good, mem any good memorable moments you enjoyed in the Indies? Like moments? Uh, I like when I went to watch a show at Triple WA and I sat with Steve and <laughs> and we sat there and had our picture taken. That was enjoyable. Like there you go. him ref in the tag match where he talks about giving me the stunner. Um, he actually ref a couple of my matches, so you know it was fun to be around him because 
he's a great referee. And, uh, you know, when I, when I played the part as the heel, I always like to give the ref the hard time. Right. You know, so. Absolutely. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, let me, let me, let me think of a good indie moment that I had. Uh, the cat likes me too. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> um, let me see. Good indie moment. I'm telling you the the Shane Douglas thing. Yeah. With Scott Hall being there and in the locker room, and uh, oh, I'll tell surreal. you, surreal, surreal. Like he's in the locker room and he sa- he looks at me, he goes, "Don't worry about anything, kid." Smacks me on the back, you know. That's awesome. And uh, you know, not really a kid. I'm a kid in the business to him, but yeah, not, like, in, you know, I'm not far behind him in age. I mean. Maybe a little bit, but not that far. <laughs> but that's the kind of shit that you go through, you know? So, But that's good stuff. Uh, let's see. Oh, when I met the Honky Tonk Man. Okay. Oh, that was a good one. Because at the time, swine flu was the big thing. And uh, everybody I... was fist pumping, you know? And he was like, swine flu, brother. Swine flu, brother. And... Next thing you know, Jack Hill comes in, who used to be the mad Russian, and he right. wrestled on the indies. But, like, Jack Hill comes in, and Honky Tonk Man sees him and goes, hey, Jack. And he goes, hey, Honky Man, what's up? And it's like they, they knew each other for years, but it's because of some tour that went on over in Europe that WXW took their guys to, and WWE guys were there. Wow. So, it's, you know, it's amazing to watch, like, the guy you wrestle on the indie with when the big name comes to town, they know each other, and it's uh, it's kind of cool. Uh, Dude. Man, there's so many. Dude. Good, good time. <clears throat> Goose, you might not have made it in your mind, like, to the WWF or on television or got signed a contract with them or whatever, but you lived a wrestling career – that most guys would only dream of. All the guy, all the names you just mentioned, some of the guys you just met, sure, but some of the guys you actually wrestled. And I mean, those are guys that you might have wrestled had you been signed anyway. Yeah. So I mean, you got absolutely nothing but praise and respect from not only fans, but like wrestlers alike. Like you said. It was a real cool thing that, you know, Batista knew who you were in front of your kids. Like, you know, that, that, that kind of yeah. shit, you can't, pay, you can't put a price on that. No, oh, that's yeah. badass. And I mean, having a guy like roadblock that you trained and now roadblock is like one of the franchise guys. Shout in out to roadblock, even though he don't watch. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, maybe but I mean, watching. Yeah, you know, but I mean, you know, and and he's given back now, and he's entertaining people. So it's kind of yeah. like, in a way, you're still you're still part of it. You're the the echoes of your career, the ripples are still out there. Yeah. So conspicuous by his absence is Brick House, because Brick, there was nobody more excited that you were coming on here than Brick House. But I know he he works a weird. Schedule. I think he works nights. I'm not sure. I think if so. Mama Brickhouse is, if Mama Brickhouse is still watching, she can attest to that. I'm sure. But shout out to Brickhouse. I hope you enjoyed this hour with Mongoose, man. Because I could ha- I could talk to Mongoose for for three hours, Keith. Yeah. Oh, and you know, real quick before you go, uh, we're not going yet. The okay, Opus yeah. Brothers, who you know, I don't know if you ever ever met him, uh, Professor Keith. But uh, I don't you think so. No. If you ever do meet. The one to have them to have the doubleness, the the, the double mint twins. Um, you know, they they shake your hand, they grab your hand like you're right. you know, see what kind of wrist strength you have. They absolutely about, they're arm wrestlers, right? They're they got to see how strong they, you are. You know, they're six foot four, six three, and they're twins and they're big guys. And you know, people would say they were fat, but then we'd say, well, muscle moves the weight and uh, stuff Dude. like that. And they were powerless. I don't know why they never wrestled. Why and, did they uh, never get in the ring? Who knows? I don't they know. They were monsters maybe, back maybe in the day. Because they were shy when it came down to it. Like around maybe. their friends and stuff, Big Mouse, you know. Right. Great guys. Always, always helping out. I love remember Todd. when Todd. Love wrestling. Todd. Todd, I hope you're watching, brother. Right. You know, and you know, you know, we love you. We had the training center on Linden Street, and um, they bought Chris Fish, who just passed away. 
um, was a big wrestling fan. You probably know who he is. I know who he is. Yeah. And uh, I guess, you know, they were like kind of playing big brother to him. And uh, they brought him to the training center and we had him in the ring and we were doing stuff. And, uh, you know, and, and Todd and Eric wouldn't always like praise other people because they were always kind of shit on because they were so big or, right. you know, they opened their mouth or uh, talk like a trucker. They yeah. didn't care who the hell you were. <laughs> They call you a whore. They say that. Yeah, yeah, you're a whore, you know. <laughs> you know, that they say, fuck you, blow hard. But, right. um, <laughs> yeah. so, you know, but they, they said to me, they're like, you know, that's awesome that I was doing it. Like, yeah. they, they thought it was amazing. They were living vicariously through you, as was mm -hmm. I, just watching, coming no. in and hearing the stories. And, and hearing all these stories again that I might have heard them back in the day, but I don't remember, dude. I don't remember what happened last week. So it's, it was awesome. All these stories are awesome. And I know you have a hundred more. We got to do this again sometime. Yeah, we'll do it again. One, so bad. one last thing I want, I want. There's two. I have two more questions before we get out of here, brother. Okay, go ahead. Number one, can you please tell me about the time you met King Kong Bundy? Or was it more than once? Oh, it was more than once. Okay. Yeah. But uh, maybe the first time. Well, first time we were at a show in York. And uh, um, you know, we were talking, and then um, you know, I didn't know his real name was Chris, and everybody would say Chris, and I'm like, "Who the hell are you talking about?" And here they were talking about Bundy. <laughs> Bundy. So, so we go out to eat, and you would think like there's going to be this big spread because he's going to order all this food. He didn't eat any more than the next guy, right? Right. But super nice, super kind, you know. Um, Kind of, kind of in gimmick, but not in gimmick. Yeah. Kind of just seemed like that was his thing. And you know, like you said about Andre, when you're little and you look at those guys, you see them as huge giants. So Monster. he didn't seem as big to me now that I was older and bigger. Right. Mm -hmm. Then he comes to an autograph signing at Bud's store in the Lehigh Valley, right. you know, where we had LVW. So I go there, and he remembers who I am. So we get our picture taken together. By this time, I got like the Hogan stash, you know. <laughs> and I look at the picture and I go, "That some bitch ain't much taller than I am." <laughs> so then I'm with my girl and we're in Wildwood, and there's uh, like a card show or, you know, like trading card show. And we walk in, and son of a bitch, there sits King Kong Bundy. There he is. <laughs> okay, here we go. We'll get our picture taken again. And again, he remembered when I started to talk to him. I said, remember we were at Bud's store? Oh, yeah, yeah. How you doing? That kind of stuff. Got my girl, got her picture taken with him. Now she's 110 pounds standing next to him. Of course, then he looks big, you know? Right, but, of course. So the condominium yeah. with legs. Condom Monsoon used to call him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I loved Bundy. Believe me, I loved Bundy. And, I can't uh, think of Bundy anymore without hearing about this Ernie Ladd story that Ernie Ladd would give him shit all the time and would be like, yeah. Bundy, you're stealing Bundy. You're stealing from this house, Bundy. You're not that good. Why are we paying you this money? You're stealing Bundy. That's Unbelievable. Funny. Uh yeah, yeah. Uh and the last question I got for you, dude, you wrestled all these guys. You wrestled lots of big names. You had a you had a fantastic career, man. You had a great run. You you might not have made it to WWE, man, but I'm so in all and in envy of, of what you, what you accomplished in the wrestling business. Is there anybody alive or dead that you did not get to wrestle that you would have wanted to? Yeah. I mean, you know, wrestling. And don't you dare say Hogan. I, I really thought he was going to go there. I thought so too, but. <laughs> I mean, of course, that would be amazing, but right. it would be amazing to like get in a ring with Sting. The guy's still doing it. Yeah. Right. Just to have my, you know, I always heard stories about Triple H and Chris Benoit. Like before a show would happen, they would go out and work out in a ring and they would put on a clinic. So, like, yeah, like wrestling Triple H, I know he could still go. I sure. can't. I mean, I mean, I could probably go for a couple minutes, but. I mean, it would just be great to like go there and get in the ring with that guy, just to lock up and 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 uh, 
He could probably carry you. And do some stuff. You know, just <laughs> just to say that, you know, I did that. You know, or or like uh wrestle in the garden, even if it was a dark match where I was just a beat one. up bag. Like I call him beat one. up bag with Frankie Williams. Right. So uh you know, just just one match in the garden because it can't be the spectrum anymore that we know. The right. spectrum yeah. was gone. Spectrum's gone. So, right. Yeah. So the garden would be cool. And, uh, but, um, you know, there was a there was something that like Billy Graham said. Um, he was the heel, but it was turning at the time. Like mm -hmm. he was this big bad guy who beat the All American, you know, or beat uh, Bruno San Martino, the big star, but and everybody hated him. But as time was moving. It was changing. They started cheering him. He started to become like the the new wave. And that's what they say when the, the DVD says um, 10 years too late or too soon or something like that. Right. What it says. Uh -huh. it's, it's the truth. Like it was coming around. And man, just to see what it would have been like, you know, to, to, In the to garden. somebody like that. You know, or even even wrestle like a Johnny Raj or a Jose Luis Rivera or any of those guys, you know. And when I was 21, if I'd have started, I could have still seen some of that stuff, you know, because some of them guys were probably still wrestling on the indies and shit sure. like that. You know, it wasn't supposed to happen then. Because if it was supposed to happen then, it would have. Mm -hmm. Well, brother, don't go away. We're going to end this. Up. We're going to wrap this up, man. Believe me. I appreciate you to the max. You know that. I, 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 I've known you for so long, man. You're, you're definitely a brother to me. I, I, I was so in all back in the day, you used to come into 7-Eleven and tell me stories. And these stories I'm hearing now, I, I, I haven't heard half of these stories. And I'm sure you have a lot more. But So we definitely got to do a, a part two down the road. But, man, it's so I was so happy to see it in Quaker Town. On uh, in February, and uh, I hope to see you again you. soon. I'm and coming man, down to see Chad. You're coming down on March. Yeah, I got to see Chad and his partner. Shane yeah, oh, yeah. Got to see. There it. you go. Absolutely, absolutely, man. JT Cage and Roadblock against, or, or I'm sorry, yeah, Ro Roadblock and Shane Douglas against JT Cage and Malcolm King is going to be yeah, fun. You're going to get JT on here with his blood pressure and everything. He keeps saying he's tagging with Roadblock. Good God. Malcolm King got his name two ways. I think Malcolm King was Malcolm X and Martin Luther King, and I think that's how he got his name. Uh, I'll, I'm going to take your word for that. I, 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 well, you ask him I, next time you see him. Well, I've tried to have him on here many times, and, he, and we've gotten close, and then last minute he gets booked or okay. something, so... I never oh, want to yeah. interfere with guys getting booked, believe me. So, yeah. but but Goose, I, I I love you, brother, and I and I hope I can't wait to see you again soon. And we're gonna do this again soon because I know you got a lot more stories, but I don't want to hold you up any longer than we have. But right. brother, big Alboski, big Alboski, Mr. K, Mongoose signing out, brother. All right, yeah, absolutely, Alrighty. brother. We love you. Thanks, man. Absolutely. Anytime, man. You're welcome back anytime. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there he goes, Keith the Mongoose. So uh we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up, Keith. Uh man, yep. we, we we jumped over that hour quick. Uh everybody next month or next week on um Sunday, six o'clock, same place, same time. We're back for another interview. Um, you can catch Keith and I. On 3WA Carnage coming up every Friday at 6 o'clock, uh -huh. uh, where Keith and I are now the cats out of the bag on that one. We are now the the commentators, the voices of of 3WA, and we could not be more proud. Talk about that a second, Keith, before we sign off here. Yeah, I mean, that's a dream come true. And before we sign off, too, uh, just before we get too in the weeds with that, who's our guest for next Sunday? Do we have them booked yet or not? We are booked straight through May, so I can look that up for you in a second. Because I, right, I don't want to say, oh, the return of the one and only J.T. Funk. 
That's your guy. How could you forget? How is that not just bursting out I of knew you? He was he was no, I knew he was coming. I knew he was coming soon. I just didn't know it was that soon. Market calendars. Sunday, the 20th of March. JT Funk is in the house. Yeah, going to be a good time. Uh, but yeah, I mean, going back to Triple WA, I mean, that's a dream come true. You know, certainly for me, I always thought heel manager or commentator. Uh, I'm going to be doing the play-by-play, -play, as you might imagine, because I'm the analytical guy. I know the names of the moves He's and the, the holds professor. and stuff. Yeah, so we'll be... I'll be providing that part. Alan will be the caller and, you know, probably spouting off, and I'll keep him in line, as I do. So check um, that out on... Um, yeah, be, please. You guys can check that out on 3WA's Facebook page, or you can check that out on 3WA's YouTube channel every Friday at 6 o'clock. Meantime, Keith and I will be back here next Sunday at 6 o'clock live with J.T. Funk. Yeah, it'll be a and, good one. Uh, we're we're going to leave you guys with one last thing is please say a prayer for Scott Hall uh, and, yeah. Big, and Big E as, as Mongoose uh, spoke about Big E as well to get well yeah. soon, Big I E. Mean, yeah, unfortunately, he does not need surgery. Um, he was saying on the day he can move everything, all the digits work. So, broken neck, but thank God it wasn't worse. Damn right. It could have been a lot worse. Thank you. It could have. Thank you, Mongoose. And I can't wait to talk to you again, brother. That was phenomenal. And that just went by so quick. Bam. Mm -hmm. Just like that, it was gone. And I, and I knew it would. And I knew, you'd, I knew you'd have a good time, brother. He's already texting me right now. <laughs> that was amazing. He had a good time. Because, I mean, a lot of guys like that, when they get to a certain age, they, they think nobody remembers them. Trust me. A lot of people in the Lehigh Valley remember Mongoose. And not only that, but a lot of big names in wrestling remember Mongoose. So that's, that's the great thing about are. wrestling. Fantastic career, right, Keith? He, he wasn't signed by WWE, but but man, what a career in the indies. I mean, he, he wrestled everybody. Absolutely. And he was and like we said, he was able to pass it on and to you know, help guys out that are stars now locally and are entertaining the crowds locally. And I mean, that's, that's great. You know, you were able to go in there, have a great career and give something back. My thanks to everybody that chimed in to Layla, to Thundercat, Greg, to all the guys, Steve Chaz, all you guys that chimed in. Thank you so much for chiming in mm -hmm. and making Mongoose feel welcome to around the turnbuckle. We'll see you guys next week on the big Alboski. He's professor Keith. And we're out of here.